Hi guys, good afternoon. So our goal for today is to get a general understanding of the MRI pulse sequences. So by the end of this lecture, you will be able to have in mind a roadmap on how to analyze MRI images based on this general understanding. So everything in MRI is centered on the story, on the story about the protons. So later we're going to see that these protons would just like to dance. Okay? So when we say protons, we refer to the hydrogen atoms. Okay? In the body, the most abundant protons will be in the form of hydrogen from water. Okay, hydrogen from water, in the form of H2O, and hydrogen from fat molecules. So in the natural environment, okay, these protons will be just like this. Some will be spinning this way, some will be oriented this way. But what will happen if we put these three protons inside a box with a strong magnet inside? So these are the lax protons. If we put these protons inside the box with a magnet inside it, the protons will be in attention. These protons will align themselves to the magnetic field. Okay, So they are now standing in attention here. Okay? In reality, some of them will be upside down. But the general idea here is that in the presence of the strong magnet, they're going to align themselves to the direction of the magnetic field. Take a look at just one proton. Okay? This proton is standing upright here on the dance floor. The floor here would represent um, the X and Y plane, okay? X and Y plane, while an imaginary pole here in this direction will be the Z axis, okay? So the Z axis is representative of the longitudinal axis, okay? Again, this is the transverse plane. This one is the longitudinal plane. Okay, now the proton has two dance moves. Okay, let's take a look at how the protons will dance. This is one of the dance move. This one is the second dance move. Now, which of these two tops has movement okay, in the XY plane? Is it A or is it B? Or is it both? Okay. The correct answer here is that both of tops A and B have movement in the transverse plane. Now, which of these two tops have more movement in the longitudinal plane? Okay, again, this is the longitudinal plane. Okay, the answer is top B. Okay, now how are we going to induce these protons to dance? Okay, for these protons to dance, we have to give it some extra energy. This extra energy is given in the form of RF pulses. Okay, this is the representation of the RF pulse given making these protons dance. These RF pulses are shown in books as this zigzag line, okay? This is the RF pulse which makes them dance. Now let's focus here on top B, okay? This top B, after receiving the initial RF pulse, will try to go back to its initial position here when it was aligned here, okay, to the magnet. To the magnetic field. Different protons would have a different rate of this time to go back 
to its original position. So if this top B was a proton from fat, okay, um, it will be quick to regain its position. Okay? Quick to regain its position would refer to um, its T1 relaxation property. Okay? So, the property on how quickly it would regain its longitudinal magnetization is its T1 property. So, because fat is quick to regain, this is going to be called T1 shortening. Okay? So, fat has a short T1 time. We're going to hear that a lot, um, T1 shortening. And that means that the substance is just like fat in the, in the sense that it has a short T1 property, giving us a bright signal on T1 with the images. Okay, more on that later. Now, what about this top A? After receiving the initial pulse, the movement here in the transverse plane will eventually be lost. This time, okay, to lose its transverse magnetization is called the T2 relaxation property of that proton, okay? How quickly it loses its transverse magnetization is its T2 relaxation property. Okay? So how do these uh, protons okay, lose this transverse magnetization? The energy it has here from its spinning will be shared to the other spinning protons beside it. Or its neighbor protons. Okay, so if this proton is a proton from water, okay, from water, um, it's going to take a long time, okay, before water is going to share its um, energy to its nearby or neighbor proton because of its long time to lose its transverse magnetization we call water to have a long t2 relaxation time these concepts of relaxation are described based on where the extra energy is transferred to here on top b the extra energy from the spinning proton is lost to its environment. That's why we call it a spin lattice relaxation. Energy from the spin is transferred to the environment or the lattice. Now, in top B, the extra energy from the top is given or donated to its neighbor spinning proton. That's why it's called spin spin relaxation.